And there will be battles that I will have to fight. But victory or defeat, it's up to me to decide. But how can I expect to win if I never try? beautify our lifestyle so persons who knew us before Christ and was repelled by us is now saying wow I welcome you I find you now attractive because of the renewing of the mind because of what the Lord himself has done in us through his word so we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind we have to be transformed. It's a process. How do you transform the mind? Look at the caterpillar. He enters into a stage of cocoon. He isolates himself from his surrounding. He blocks out everything. And he constrains himself to the purpose that he's designed for. He locks out everything finds a closet and he shuts out the world he shuts out the flesh shuts out the devil and he allows the process through the word of God to transform him a 
I, you know, you know, I'm doing a duality as I speak. Because the caterpillar is a metaphor. So we are the caterpillars. And we need to get into that place. This song is shut in with God. In a secret place. Get into that place where it is me, God and his word. I want his presence to build a pyramid around me. And I want his word working on the inside to transform me. So you may see me now and I may look nothing and no one. But I am in a place with God going through a transformation. And I'm going to come through. And when I come through, you're going to look at me and say, Wow, what a beautiful work the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I, am, I guarantee you if we should testify this morning, we would come to the understanding that some of us were not so nice. We never come from good stock. We weren't of the echelon class. But God reached way down. God reached way down. Picks us up and takes us to where we are now. And that is why all I can say to you is to God be the glory. Whatever you're seeing, it is him who has done it, not me. I just went into a cocoon stage. And he just used the word. And the word, like a hammer and a chisel, started to chip away at the things he didn't desire. It hurt. I had to yield. But at the end of the day, I've gotten wings. And I'm commended because of him. So, if we're going to appropriately feed our mind, the mind must first be transformed. Be because why, why is it it has to be transformed? Because you cannot feed carnal man spiritual food. If all of what is in the mind is your academic achievements, self pride, who I want to be and when I want to get there and how I want to get there, if all those things permeate the mind, then there's no room in the thought for submission to the will of God. So you cannot, you cannot ask the carnal man to put down pride and selfishness. Because in the carnal state, there is a rebellion and a hatred against God. The carnal man says, look here, a war between God and I, there is a war. I will never, as a matter of fact, God himself says, the carnal mind will never submit and will never please me. Impossible. The mind that is driven by the flesh, and I don't mean the flesh that this house you live in. I mean the nature, the Adamic nature, the destructive, pride, hypocritical nature that came into the flesh through sin will never bring glory to God. Impossible. And if we're going to appropriately feed our minds, we have to ensure that we allow the process of transformation to take place. We have to be transformed. We have to be transformed. And the only way we are transformed is by a renewed mind. Because if we are what we think, then we must be careful what we are thinking. Because when we are what we think, are we butterflies or caterpillars? So it's critical for us to understand. If we're going to feed the mind, then we need to feed the mind the way Christ intended. We feed our minds on the promises of God. We follow the principles and teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we tell our minds what God's word says. There's a little 
post I got, um, someone had a major challenge and they were like highlighting the problem. This big problem. And the response was, don't tell God about your big problems. But tell your problems about your big God. So that's how you that's how you, 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 you feed your mind. You don't allow thoughts to make you fall prey to fear. When you're alone, remember you're not alone. Remember Elisha was in his hut and the Assyrians surrounded Israel. And Gehazi ran and says, Alas, my master, the Assyrians are upon us. The armies have surrounded us. And Elisha walked out and said, God of Abraham, open the eyes of my servant and show him what is happening here. The Bible says when the Spirit of God removed this care from his eyes, he said, my God, my God, the, the horses of God and the chariots of God, the, the army of living God was chariots and horsemen and fire. So even in your time when you feel alone, like you see alone, remember his promise to your mind, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. I will be with you to the end. I am a covenant-keeping God. Can't break my word. My word and I are one. So keep those thoughts. We have to keep those thoughts in our mind. We have to feed our mind on the truth of God that this too shall pass. This world is passing. And all of us in it is passing with it. But only he who does the will of God will remain. So we have to feed our mind with the truths of scripture. That if you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and the righteousness of God, all these things will be added unto you. All the things that the world is sinking on, running after. God says, if you seek me first, I will give them to you. Because in seeking me first, you come to know what is priority, what is valuable. It's not the things. I am. A relationship with me is more valuable. Then I can appropriate to you things. Because then you understand that it's not the product, it's the person. You understand that it's not the gift, it's the giver. So we need to understand these things. So the book of Colossians chapter 3, 1 through 2 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, say, seek those things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above not on the things that are on the earth. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. So Colossians is saying, that if you are crucified with Christ and you're buried with him dead to sin dead to the world but you're raised up a new creation and you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus Paul says to the Colossians set your thinking make sure your thoughts are generated from heaven from where you sit, your final place of authority, where you and God agree. Set your mind on the things of God, on the authority of God over your life, not on the things of the world, because that is where you're seated. When you know where you're seated, my brothers and sisters, then you know how to operate. We don't fight for victory when we know where we're seated. <laughs> no, we fight in victory because we can't be defeated. For greater is he that is in me and you than he is in the world. So when you, when you know where you're seated, where there is no opposition, where 
there is no competition where there is no challenge where your god has no equal he has no rival there is no enemy when you know where you're seated then the battle becomes easier because you're not fighting with a heavy sword you're fighting with a light heart your mind is clear because you're you're fighting from the end to the beginning you're not fighting from the beginning to the end huh you're fighting from the end you're fighting from a perspective that it's already done it's already done the battle is already won so set your mind on the things that are above not on the things that are of this world the, the second thing in Philippians, Paul spoke to the Philippians church and it was read earlier. And he says in verse 4, he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. He says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by a prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god does this sound like somebody Th these verses do they sound like paul is asking you to act from the beginning or from the end act from the end he says let your moderation be known to all men the lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god and the peace of god which passeth all understanding will god or keep your minds and hearts through christ jesus paul instructed the philippian church as to where and how they should approach life how you approach life as a believer it cannot be from worry because the believer shouldn't be worried the believer must be concerned but not worried so in his final address in verse 8 he says finally my brethren finally brothers and sisters he says whatsoever things are true we're speaking about feeding the mind if we're going to feed the mind, we have to feed the mind on the truths of God. Whatsoever things are true. If you resist truth, you are resisting. You are, you are, you are saying to the mind, this is not good for you to consume. He says, whatsoever things are honest. If you don't want to act honestly. You know, I... I emancipation sunday the, the 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 word that the lord brought was if you are truly emancipated why do we need the security force to govern you if you're independent and emancipation and independence one is legislated and because it's legislated it is giving you the rights to govern yourself the rights to rule yourself so if you are truly emancipated then we should not need a rope of police on the road for you to stay in your lane when you go to the bank you shouldn't come last and enter first you shouldn't breach the line you should wait on your turn not you oh jesus so Paul so whatever things are honest Whatever things are just. This, this is how you feed the mind. With the things that are true. The things that are honest. Whatever things are honorable. Whatever things are pure. Pure thoughts. Clean thoughts. I know our mind like to let me give an example of the mind so you understand the mind is like a television 
it is it reflects what it is connected to if you are connected to cable whichever channel you tune into the mind plays it that's if you really want to get an understanding of the mind that's what it is whatever channel you tune into when you turn on the remote, when you use remote and press, when you press remote and turn on the television, that is how the mind operate. That's why the scripture says, if you, if you, if your feed, if your network, if your connection is with God's kingdom, then you'll find truth, you'll find honesty, you'll find horrible things. But if your if your mind is connected the kingdom of darkness then you're going to be watching what what will your mind be seen and what will you be displaying the mind is a medium it is the place where all the information comes in and you live from there so if we have to be careful what we allow in our minds we have to guard it and protect it and shield it and speak and um, read truths into it through our action as we practice honesty the mind becomes aware that you must operate from this now there is because the mind is this the middleman you have to look at if the mind is in relationship with the carnal man then the spirit goes dormant is dead so you cannot get any feed from the spirit realm. You, God can't speak to you because you can't hear. If the mind is connected to the world, then you can't hear from God. But if the mind is connected to God, then the world and the flesh and the devil becomes dead. And now you can move in the will of God. So Paul said, whatever things are pure, whatever things are true, whatever things are um, honorable, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely and commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. So when a thought cross your mind, check it. When I think like this, does it honor God? Is it praiseworthy? If the Lord should put up our mind now on the screen, what would we see? Who would run first? Don't, don't answer that. When you get the picture. But the truth is, the Spirit of God causes us to see our mind just like when we look at that. Because when the words start to go in, He starts to reveal the thought pat pattern. Because the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord that He used to search out the inner secrets of the heart and mind and belly. So we have to understand the importance of what we give to the mind, what we allow the mind to consume as our lives bring glory and honor to the living God. The Lord bless you this morning. As I close off, I'll say to you, as a man think in his heart, so he becomes and whatever it is that we want from the Lord the Lord is asking us to tune our mind into his word let the word form that cocoon around us and we meditate therein day and night like Joshua for only then will we find good success God bless you Thank you ever so much for sharing with us today in our worship experience. I do hope that the word, the word that came today reached your minds. 
and your hearts and that for you you will continue to stay connected to God so that whatsoever you feed your mind will be played out in your actions and your words. We would want to hear from you. Please make contact to us or on the information on your screen as you appropriately feed your minds on God's word. And let that be the thing to light your way. Thank you and God bless you.